Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. Delegate Gilbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, today is the day, or at least that's what we were told, that today would be the day. We got extra time built into our organizational documents for the resolution on nonpartisan redistricting to be brought to the floor. We were told the extended time, which was unusual in our procedural resolution, was because we needed time to work on that document and get it to the floor in a proper order, which, by the way, is exactly like we did it last year. Eighty-three members of this body voted for the constitutional amendment on nonpartisan redistricting last year, Madam Speaker. And we were told that we would get it done. The chairman of Privileges and Elections stood on this floor a couple of weeks ago and assured us that it would be done. I don't like putting people on the spot, Madam Speaker, but I have to quote the gentleman's words back to the body. I quote, others will be irresponsible in their comments. They'll talk about the sky is falling, the sky is falling. The Democrats aren't going to keep their promise. What are we doing about redistricting? And I say to those people, we are at work, shoulders to the wheel, and we are getting the job done. Now you may choose to get in front of the cameras. You may choose to make reports to the reporters. But we're choosing to go about it in a different fashion. We're choosing to expeditiously and very responsibly address the task for which we've been assigned. And in that regard, we are getting it through committee. And if you wait on us, you'll be seeing it coming through to the floor. In seven hours, the deadline expires, and in truth, in about five minutes, we're going to walk out of here and miss the opportunity to act on that legislation that we were told we would be seeing coming through to the floor. Now, we may not be done, and we recognize that, Madam Speaker. We recognize that there is still a Senate vehicle for this amendment that you have at your disposal that you have yet to assign to committee, Madam Speaker. So any notion that we are getting it through committee has yet to come to fruition. We hope that the 83 members who voted for it last year will vote for it again. Maybe they're not all here. But I know that the majority, of, the vast majority of the members of this body, especially in the majority, have made nonpartisan redistricting a centerpiece of their campaigns, of their stump speeches, of their rhetoric for a decade. And we cannot abandon that. The majority last year, the Republican majority, led the way. We didn't have to. We could have sat back and said, we're not going down that road. But we led the way on that. We committed to that process. 83 members of this body committed to that process. To my knowledge, most people in here have committed to this process in some way or another. But it doesn't feel like we're committing to it anymore, Madam Speaker. It feels like we're doing something else. That's our perception. That's the perception we've read in news accounts in the last 24 hours. We hope it's not the case. Uh, and I hope the gentleman from Norfolk um, does still intend to get this to the floor. And we've thought about all the different ways that we could get it to the floor. And Madam Speaker, we just we don't want to we don't want to go down the road of of unnecessarily dividing this body. This is something we should all be in on this together. And um, I, I assume that the laughter is from those who would prefer to draw their own districts, Madam Speaker. I assume the the laughter in the chamber right now is from those who would like to abandon their public pronouncements on this subject and make sure that they choose their voters and not the other way around, contrary to everything we've ever heard about this issue from the other side. But uh, here's where we find ourselves. Five minutes, this opportunity is going to leave us, and we have but one opportunity left. And we hope the other side of the aisle is committed to this process, because it doesn't feel that way anymore, Madam Speaker. Thank you.